Good morning. Welcome to Meadowbrook Congregational Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. This is the fourth Sunday of the season of Easter as we continue to celebrate Jesus' resurrection and look for places in which the risen Christ is working in our lives and in our world. We are glad that you have taken the time to join us this Sunday morning and we pray that you are safe and well. Please let us know that you are here by making a, a note in our comment sections. This morning's service includes the assistance of Colleen Foster, Karen Yergolite, and Alan Yergolite, and Laura Ritter. Our pre-service music was provided by our organist, John Bogdan, and later in the service you will hear a solo, Peace on Earth, by Stephanie Rose Kanick. The service will be posted on YouTube later in the day, and then a link for it can be found on our church's website. At 11 o'clock this morning, we're going to try a virtual fellowship hour through Zoom. If you want to participate and you haven't yet received the link for the Zoom, please email Colleen Foster quickly at colleenfostermbcc.org. This will be a bit of uh, organized chaos, I think, but it will be fun to see everyone's faces and hear everyone's voices. This Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, the Bible study on the Book of Acts continues also on Zoom. Please email me at aritter at mbccc.org if you want the link to join that Bible study. This is an interesting look at the early church and at our responsibilities today as the church. Women's Faith Group meets Thursday morning at 10 a.m. If you wish to join that group, Colleen Foster again has the link for Zoom. See Foster at mbccc.org. Next Sunday is Mother's Day, and it is our hope that our high school graduating seniors will be speaking as part of that service, as is our tradition. Next Sunday night, we'll be having another session of a B3 called BYOB3. It's a discussion of culture and theology designed especially for young adults, but open to anyone who wants to participate. It'll take place at 8 p.m., and if you wish to join that, please email me to get the Zoom link a Ritter at mbccc.org. I want to take the time to thank all of you who have been sending cards and making phone calls to those who are alone or isolated during this time. You're making a difference in lives and I am grateful for that. Please continue in these special hospitality efforts. Thank you for your financial support that continues. You can make your gifts for the church through PayPal or through Venmo or by mailing your checks to the church. Thank you so much again for being here today. In the dark valley, at the banquet table, in the hard work at life, in our moments of ease, in our day-to-day -day reality, in times set aside like this time right now, for worship, for listening, for paying attention, for every step we take, goodness and mercy will follow us. Our cups will overflow. Together, let us worship God. Let's pray. Loving God, our Good Shepherd, you know our names. You care for us. When we face death and darkness, you walk beside us. When we hunger for your love, you fill us with your presence. When we are fearful, you feed us at your table. May we dwell in the house of goodness and mercy all the days of our lives. And as we gather for worship this day, we look to you for inspiration and for strength and for wisdom. We pray these things in the name of the shepherd who taught us to pray together saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our scripture lessons this morning will be read by Laura Ritter. We have two scriptures this morning. The first scripture is from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 10. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of him, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to him. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. The second scripture is the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of darkness, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. May these readings soften our hearts and open our minds to new insights from the risen Lord. Thank you, Laura. I recall a road trip that I took in my previous life, as I call it. Early November 1980, I was living in Bridgeport Township, a community near Saginaw at the time. I had just purchased a brand new Ford Escort and was going to make a trip to Seward, Nebraska to visit a friend who was going to college there. My friend Bob told me that he would be happy to make the trip with me, offer me some company and conversation along the road, so I took him up on his offer. Because it was my car, and because it was a new car, I preferred to do the driving. I drove us out of Michigan, drove us through Indiana, around the freeway confusion of Chicago. I drove the car as we took I-80 through Illinois and across the mighty Mississippi into Iowa. At that time, though, I was getting a little road weary, and Bob was getting a little more than anxious to drive my new car. So I decided that perhaps it was time for me to take a rest and to let Bob have some time behind the wheel. So I pulled into a rest stop and we exchanged places in the car. I sat in the passenger seat for about 10 minutes or so before my eyes were getting a little heavy. I could feel myself relaxing and falling slowly asleep. But that didn't last long. Before I could enter the full piece of restful slumber, I was started by the sounds of the car's tire hitting the rumble strips on the side of the freeway. Bob had fallen asleep behind the wheel. I shouted something to him, probably not very pleasant. I reached over and I grabbed the wheel and I pulled the car safely back into the middle of the lane. Bob woke up quickly and I told him to pull off at the very next exit. We were moving back to our original places. I could not trust Bob to drive my car. I would rather drive exhausted than sit in the passenger seat and worry about whether or not Bob could stay awake. There's an old Peanuts cartoon strip from 1972 that featured Charlie Brown and Peppermint Patty having a conversation about Charlie Brown's anxiousness. Charlie Brown described the experience of riding in the back seat of the car when your parents are in the front seat. It's night, you're headed back home, 
and all is well. You could sleep worry-free because you knew that your parents were taking care of everything, the driving, the navigation, the worrying. You can associate that feeling that Charlie Brown was talking about, can't you? Everything's fine, you're, you're so comfortable, you can safely rest. There's a feeling of utter trust and security provided by a reliable, loving, all-powerful figure behind the wheel. Peppermint Patty confidently agreed with Charlie Brown, and then Charlie Brown had to continue. He told Peppermint Patty that that feeling doesn't last long. You eventually grow up, you have to leave the back seat, you have to leave that feeling of security and trust, and it will never be the same again. You never get to sleep securely in the back seat. When Peppermint Patty came to the same understanding, she reached toward Charlie Brown and she grabbed him and she yelled, Hold my hand, Chuck! It doesn't last. In a conversation this past week, someone mentioned to me that one of the problems of living through this pandemic and the resulting economic crisis is that we just can't relax. We just can't be at peace. It seems as if we don't have a day, or in some cases even an hour, when something new doesn't come up, a matter of worry and concern for us all. Perhaps we can take a deep breath. Perhaps we can resolve to rest just before our heads hit the pillow at night. But others have told me they're having trouble sleeping these days, or that their sleep is filled with all sorts of strange and unsettling dreams. Like Charlie Brown, we long for those days when we could sleep in the back seat of the car, trusting the power at the wheel of the car to take care of everything. We wish we didn't have to worry about COVID-19, to worry about wearing a mask, to worry about the future availability of a remedy or a vaccine, to worry about a, a second wave of infections, to worry about layoffs and job furloughs, to worry about simple trips to the grocery store. We wish we didn't have to worry about the health of our family and friends. We wish we didn't have to worry about paying our necessary bills. It's tough, if not impossible, to fall asleep in peace in the back seat of the car of life. On this fourth Sunday of the season of Easter, the scripture lessons tell us about the value of shepherds. The reading from the Gospel of John offers words of Jesus as he compares himself to a good shepherd, one who cares intimately for his flock, who protects them from danger, one whose voice the flock recognizes, one who leads them to good pastures, to cool water, to safe rest each and every day. And the other reading for this Sunday is the 23rd Psalm, perhaps the most well-known chapter in all of the Bible. This text is very familiar and loved. It's kind of associated with funeral services, but the psalm speaks of God's tender care throughout all of our life. In these words, the psalmist describes not only a source of comfort during a time of loss, but an approach to trustful living in the midst of times of uncertainty and worry. The 23rd Psalm describes God as a, a powerful yet gracious shepherd. God is one who does what needs to be done to make certain trusting sheep may live well. In its words, we're brought to consider the darkness, the dangers, the temptations of our existence. We're reminded that there are dark shadows that haunt us and make us feel a bit uneasy. We're made aware that we live in the presence of evil and that fear is a place in which we are often held captive. The 23rd Psalm names reality and takes very seriously the dangers that are a part of our life. Yet the psalm is an intense and longing prayer that hopes for deep God-given peace that overflows even in the midst of darkness. In the words of the psalmist, we are assured that God is our shepherd who leads us through and past the troubles of life. God's tender love leads us to situations of fear, to places of joy and peace. God's grace allows us, if you read the words, God's grace actually makes us lie down to take a rest from our weariness in places of refreshment and nourishment. God puts us at a bountiful table where even in the presence of enemies, we are able to recall past experiences of joy and know that such joy will come again. 
God offers peace in the midst of conflict, life in the midst of death, light in the path of darkness. In his commentary on this 23rd Psalm, Calvin Seminary's Stan Mass writes, Into the confusion of the 21st century comes the 23rd Psalm that is good news. Life is not a self-guided tour. There is someone who will give me the guidance I need. You might think that the king of the universe will have something bigger and better to do, but God commits God's self to be our personal shepherd. God guides me by giving me a record of God's will, by putting God's own spirit in my heart, by governing the developments of my life with God's invisible hand. Author Walter Brueggemann writes that although most psalms are songs of lament or praise or thanksgiving, the 23rd Psalm is different. It's a psalm of trust. Its function is to articulate and maintain a sacred canopy under which the community of faith can live out its life with freedom from anxiety. There's a givenness to be relied upon, guaranteed by none other than God, Brueggemann writes. Trust evoked by a promise. We either believe in the promise or we don't. We either live as if the promise is real and trustworthy, or we live as if the promise isn't real and can't be trusted. Charlie Brown was right. We can't ride naively and innocently in that back seat any longer. Our current situation has taught us that much of life is indeed out of control. Our current circumstance reminds us that there are dark and uncertain places in our daily lives. But the psalmist in this psalm hopes for the return of trust in God. In the presence of God that brings us peace and assurance, even when we sit in uncertain, fear-provoking front seat positions. Despite what is real, in spite of all that is around us, our lessons of faith teach us that we can frame our experiences within this larger picture. God has a loving intention. God leads us through all of life. God is with us this day. God will be with us tomorrow. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. O God, our Loving Shepherd, we come to you this morning knowing that you come to us with the strength and love of a father, with the tender mercies and patience and protection of a mother. We come to you in prayer, seeing you in the very living of our days. We admit that so often we fail to praise you. We fail to offer you our burdens. Hear us, O Lord, as we lift to you our prayers this morning for our lives and for the needs and concerns of others. We pray for those in need. In this time of COVID-19, we pray. For those who are ill, for those whose bodies are fighting this disease, for doctors and nurses and technicians and aides, for scientists and researchers, for cleaners and caregivers, for those who are grieving, we pray. For those who have lost their work, and are struggling with bills and commitments, we pray. For those affected by staying at home, for those who live in fear of having to return to work, we pray. For all of us who are affected in some way by these times and this situation, we pray. We pray for safety, We pray for health. We pray for wholeness. We pray for peace in mind and spirit and soul. 
In spite of pandemic, O oh God, may we walk with those who are alone and with those who are in need. May we do what we can to heal, to lift up, to bring life in spite of the darkness. Help us, O oh God, to help one another. Free us from fear and worry to sing your praises with our words and our deeds. Make us instruments of your peace, of your grace with those we encounter and with those we reach out to in phone calls, in notes, in electronic correspondence, and most of all, in prayer. Hear our prayers, O oh God. We pray to you in the presence of your risen Christ, our Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, I want to thank you for taking the time to worship with us this morning. I pray that you are safe and well and look forward to seeing you again in person as soon as we can. I hope that you will make yourself available to all of the online opportunities that we have. Continue to keep our church and our future in your prayers. And now the service is ended. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the peace and strength of the Holy Spirit be with you all this time and from this time forth. Amen. Please be well. I love you and I miss you and I look forward to seeing you uh, in perhaps an hour on Zoom. Good day.